Okay, today we're talking about the New Covenant, or the New Testament, and we're going to talk about how the New Covenant contrasts with the Old Covenant, or the Old Testament. Now, when we talk about the Old Testament, we're not speaking about Genesis through Malachi, as it is in our English Bibles. We're talking about the Ten Commandments, the Law, the Mosaic Law, sometimes it's referred to as, that was given to Moses and the people of Israel on Mount Sinai. That's what we're referring to. We're talking about the Old Covenant. And it's unfortunate that the first books of the Bible, up before the New Testament begins, that the whole, that the whole set of books from Genesis all the way to Malachi are called the Old Testament. It's only called that because of the fact that everything that happened from the time of Moses on was written under the Old Testament covenant between God and Israel. But all of the whole, what we call the Old Testament, isn't actually the Old Covenant per se. So we want to contrast the first covenant of, when I say the first, I'm referring to it as it's referred to in the book of Hebrews, where he said, in that he said a new covenant, Hebrews 8.13, he hath made the first covenant old. The first covenant. He's talking about in relation to the covenants made between God and the nation of Israel. That's what we're referring to as the old covenant, the first covenant. The new covenant makes the first covenant old. So, by virtue of the fact that he calls it a new covenant, he's distinguishing this covenant from the old covenant. He's distinguishing the fact by calling it a new covenant that it's replacing the old covenant. So the old covenant is no longer in power or authority as a means to attain righteousness, and it never was because man couldn't keep it. So he says in Jeremiah 31, 31, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant. So here we have it. Now why would God make a new covenant if the first covenant was sufficient? He wouldn't, would He? Now this idea that's spreading around among people uh, Hebrew Roots Movement, they're trying to say that New Covenant simply means a renewed covenant. But that is false. It's not a renewed covenant. So don't try to make it a renewed covenant. It's a new covenant because he said it's not going to be according to the covenant that he made with the children of Israel when he led them out of the, hand, out of the land of Egypt. He said, when I took you by the hand and led you out of the land of Egypt from under Pharaoh. So this is a whole new covenant. It has nothing to do. It is not the old covenant. So Paul says in Hebrews 8.13, in that he said a new covenant, he hath made the first covenant old. And then he goes on and says, now that which is decaying and waxing old is ready to do what? Vanish away. All right. So, the old covenant is ready to vanish away. What does that mean? To completely disappear.
Now, if it were sufficient and it were eternal, then it wouldn't completely disappear. Mm -hmm. All right? Why God made a new covenant? God, because for Hebrews 8 and 8, for finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. Mm -hmm. So that's found in, in uh, Hebrews 8 and 8. So, why is God making a new covenant? Because he found fault with the old covenant. All right. He said in Jeremiah 31, 32. He says in Jeremiah 31, 32, which my covenant they break. Israel broke the covenant. And when, you, when the old covenant was broken, the curse came upon the people. All right. Now, God found fault with the old because Israel always broke it. Next, a better covenant. We're going to see it's a better. In Hebrews 8 and 6, it's the called a better covenant. And why is it superior to the old covenant since the new covenant? Because the new covenant established, is established on better promises. So we can see that the Old Covenant is made void to make way for the New Covenant, which is established on better promises. Also, in Hebrews 7.22, we read that because of this oath that God made, Jesus has become the surety or the guarantee of a better covenant. So. Jesus is the guarantee Jesus is the guarantee of this new covenant the better covenant and I think everybody will agree you'd rather have the better covenant wouldn't oh, you? Oh, amen! The promises under this covenant are gu all guaranteed in full as long as Jesus lives. As long as Jesus lives, it's guaranteed. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. It's guaranteed. Glory. And as long as Jesus lives, we cannot be brought back under the old covenant because Jesus guarantees the new covenant, which is established on better promises. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is the surety of it, all these promises, as Paul said, are what? Yes and amen. And amen. amen. All right. Jesus is guaranteeing it. So all the promises under the new covenant are yes. All these better promises are yes amen. and amen. Mm -hmm. Thank God. All right. God is the teacher of the new covenant. He's the revelator of the new covenant. He is mediator 
of it, but he says, and I will be their God. Okay, we're in Isaiah 54, 13. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Why? Because all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. Isaiah 54, 13. This is a scripture that Paul is referring to when he said, If so be you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. So Paul is referring back to this prophetic scripture because there's no New Testament yet, so the only thing he could refer back to were the revelations given in the prophecies. And so because God said that all people would be taught directly by the Lord, we see that God teaches what? Jesus. He teaches us the truth is in Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. As the truth is where? Amen. In Jesus. Amen? Amen? So, anything outside of Jesus, unless it agrees with Jesus, cannot be truth. Cannot be truth. He said, under this new covenant, I will be their God. All right? Now, the Lord himself would be our teacher. And that's what Jesus came into the world and did. Mm -hmm. He taught the people. He was God's representative and he himself was God. And so he had taken upon himself the form of human flesh. Mm -hmm. And so therefore he came personally and began to teach everybody the truth. All right. Mm -hmm. And he's still teaching us the truth Amen. through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to send you another comforter. Why another? Because I have been your comforter the whole while I've been in the world, but I'm going to leave and you won't see him anymore, but he's going to come back and keep on representing me to you as if I were here personally. Amen. Amen. All right. And he's going to he's going to teach you just like I teach up until now you've come to me to get understanding when I taught you a parable you would come to me and say master tell us what the meaning of the parable is and I would tell you but now he's going to be here to reveal all things to you and he will glorify me Jesus said he doesn't come to glorify himself he came to point you to me to open your ears to my teaching to follow me because you're entering in into this new covenant covenant yeah. where, where their God will be me and their God their teacher will be me Hallelujah. amen mm -hmm. so I will be their God mm -hmm. and that he, he literally became when he came into the world he became the God of the Gentiles also as well as the Jews mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and what was the first thing that that Thomas said when he fell at Jesus feet after his resurrection, my Lord and my God. He had become Thomas's God. All right, Thomas recognized him for who he was. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. Isaiah 54, 13. Jesus himself is the mediator of this new covenant. Jesus.
Jesus is the surety of the covenant. Jesus is the teacher of the covenant. And Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. Actually, Jesus himself is the new covenant. Amen. All right. He is the mediator of the new covenant. It says in the book of Hebrews, you are come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of the blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Hebrews 12, 24. Hebrews 12, 24. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, whose blood speaks better things than that of Abel. Now, how, how was God... And the world, Jew and Gentile, how were they reconciled, brought back together, or joined back together? By Jesus' blood. What connected Israel, the nation of Israel, to God in the Old Covenant was the blood of animals. Mm -hmm. The covenant was not ratified until sacrifices and blood sacrifices were offered and Moses sprinkled both the people and the book of the law with the blood of animals. The moment the blood connected both the law and the nation, they were bound to keep it. They were bound to obey it. They said, all that the Lord hath commanded, we are able to do. Boy, that was a proud confession, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't before the law was even completed being given, they were already worshiping an idol. Yeah. So, we can see how long men are able to keep the law. And so, anybody who wants to bring the world today back under the law... Six minutes Anybody who wants to bring people back under the law is, is it's a failure from the beginning because of the fact that nobody can keep it. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant because he says in Hebrews 12, 24 that we have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling of the blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Okay? Not only does it speak better things than the blood of Abel, but, the, than, but then the blood of animal sacrifices, which other chapters in the book of Hebrew also uh, discuss. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. Chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Better promises. Amen. Because under the Old Covenant, the Mosaic Covenant, their sins were remembered every year and had to be atoned for every year over and over again on the Day of Atonement. But thank God Jesus is the, the atonement. Hallelujah. He is the universal atonement because He is not only the propitiation for our sins, but as John wrote, for the sins of the whole wide world. Amen? Amen. So thank God this is definitely a better covenant because it covers both Jew and Gentile, complete and forever forgiveness, forever remission. Amen. All right. For this reason, this is why Jesus is the mediator of a new covenant. Mm -hmm. Because you could not get eternal forgiveness under the old. Hallelujah. Your sins were remembered every year. All right. So Jesus is its mediator. Under this new covenant... We have a new relationship and a new life with God. We begin a whole new walk with the Lord. It's a walk with the Lord and not with the devil. It's a walk in the light. 
in the truth. He said, a new spirit I will put inside you. Mm -hmm. A new spirit. Mm. Okay? Yes. And I will cause you to walk in my statutes. Ezekiel 36... Verses 25 through 27. A new spirit. You didn't get a new spirit under the old covenant. You didn't get a new spirit under the old covenant. He said, I will put my spirit inside you. Inside. Say it inside. Inside. Where's the Spirit? Inside. inside. A new Spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ came inside us, but when He came inside us, mm -hmm. He made our spirit new. Mm -hmm. Our spirit, our human spirit, was renewed by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So He said, And I will cause you to walk in My statutes. It's a new walk. Because the old walk, man didn't walk according to the Lord's will. All right. He says in the book of Galatians, walk in the Spirit. The Spirit's inside you. Enabling you to walk in Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. To follow Him. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are God's sons. They're God's children, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they have God's Spirit in them. Mm -hmm. Hereby we know that we are born of God because He has given us of His Spirit, John said. Mm -hmm. All right. Walk in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh because you'll be walking in the will of God. When God is the one who walks inside you, then He is the one causing you to walk in this new nature. I will cause you to walk. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. You say, how can I be sure I can walk according to God's will? Because God will cause you to walk. Yes. Say, God, God is, the one is the one who is causing me, is causing me to, walk to walk in His Word. In His Word. Amen? For it is God, Paul said, who is working in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. I will cause you to walk. I will cause you to will to do my will. I will cause you to do it. All right, so we have the assurance that we can do it because we can do all things. How? Through Christ, this new spirit under the new covenant. Thank God, under the old covenant, God wasn't inside them to help them to do His will. But under the new covenant, we have God put inside of us and we've been given a new spirit so that we can walk according to God's will in the light, in the spirit, Glory. And please God. Mm -hmm. Now, God. under this new covenant, God has recreated us. Mm -hmm. He put a new spirit within us. Mm -hmm. 
The new spirit dwelling inside of us makes us a new creature. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is what? A new creature. A new creature. With a new spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, God said in the book of Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. Mm -hmm. Right? For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Mm -hmm. The first covenant, the Mosaic covenant, is old and has passed away because it's been replaced with God making a new covenant. Amen. The old I make a new covenant. Mm -hmm. Paul equates this to the new creature in Christ. He said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, old things are what? Passed, passed away. away. New heaven and new earth. New heaven and new earth comes in, old heaven and old earth goes out. New covenant comes in, old covenant goes out. New mediator comes in, old mediator mm -hmm. goes out. Amen. A new creature comes in, the old creature goes out, passed away. away. Amen? Yeah. Amen? All right. This is, God has recreated us. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Look, watch, see, all things have become new, new under this new. new covenant. All right. This is also a faith covenant. Why a faith covenant? Because the old covenant was based upon performance, works. The new covenant is based on faith. How do you enter in? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How hard is that? I don't have to do anything except believe. And as we've said in times past, believing doesn't require the hands and feet. Working does. In order to do work, you have to depend on your feet to be able to stand or to move, and you have to depend on your hands to actually do the work. Mm -hmm. But under faith, it happens not with the hands and the feet, but with the heart. Mm -hmm. Amen? Man's hands are not involved here. Man's works are not involved here. Because it's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, speech and faith. Faith and speech. Mm -hmm. So, we see here that it's not of works, lest anybody should do what? Boast. Boast. Brag, boast, say, look what I did. Mm -hmm. No flesh is going to brag or glory mm -hmm. in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. God has decreed it. Mm -hmm. All the praise... All the glory, all the credit goes to the Lord. Amen. Unto thee, O Lord. Yes. Unto thy name give glory. Not unto us, Amen. the psalmist said, but unto thee, unto your name give the glory. Amen. All right, so a lot of Christians today uh, haven't learned that yet. And so they're still trying uh, to work their way to heaven thinking that, well, God will accept me if I just do all these things, if I'll do, I'll go to church so God will accept me, I'll read my Bible so God will uh, accept me, I'll pray so God will accept me. you got it backwards. You're first accepted by God. You're already accepted if you're saved. The moment God saved you, He accepted you. For as many as he called, them he justified. Past tense. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Mm -hmm. Why are you glorified? Because God called you. God justified you. God then is the one that will glorify you. You have no part in this except to believe that God is doing it. Mm 
Amen. For the just shall live by what? Faith. Faith. The righteous will live by what? Faith. Faith. Now, okay, we'll, we'll get into that in just, a, in, in just a bit. Why a faith covenant? Jeremiah 31, 31. Let's read it. In Jeremiah 30, 31, 31, God said, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. What was... It was a do and live covenant. You'll live, but only if you do these all these works under this covenant. If you can't do all these works under this covenant, you will die. Mm -hmm. For the soul that sinneth, and sin is a transgression of the law, the old covenant. Sin is a transgression of the law, the old covenant. But if we're not under the old covenant anymore, then we haven't transgressed anything if we're not keeping Sabbath days or eating kosher foods and all these other things. Mm -hmm. That's why you can do these things because they're no longer required under the new covenant. It's a better covenant. Our, our Sabbath is not a day, a 24-hour day. Our, our Sabbath is Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I was, I'm the one that will give you rest. Amen. Amen. See, there's people keeping Sabbath days that, were, that kept the Sabbath day yesterday, but it wasn't Jesus giving them rest. They thought that their physical observance of a physical day mm -hmm. and physically not doing anything meant that they had rest. But you can stop working and sit down in a nice easy chair, but if you've got a guilty conscience, you don't have rest. Mm -hmm. And under the law, that's all you're going to have is a guilty conscience. Mm -hmm. So part of the rest that Jesus offers is a true rest. It's an inward rest. It's a peace, which we'll be getting into here in a little bit. Jesus is the author of this new faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith of our faith. He's the mediator, he's the surety, the guarantee, and he is the connector between man and God, and he is the author of all faith. Amen. If you need faith, you don't get it by uh, mm -hmm. fasting, you don't get faith by rolling around on the floor agonizing, you get faith by asking God, mm -hmm. who gives to all men liberally, both wisdom mm -hmm. And faith. And so if we want faith, we have to go to where? Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's how you get faith. And if you are hearing Jesus and your ears are open to Jesus, the good shepherd, for my sheep know my voice, and they will not follow a false voice or a false doctrine, Amen. then you will have faith the more you listen to Jesus and read Amen. his word and meditate on his word. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith in the book of Hebrews. Now, Paul says in the book of Habakkuk 2.4. It's a do and live. It's a do and live. Not, not, uh, Paul and James both talk about this. As it is written, the just, the righteous, shall live by faith. faith. Romans 1.17. Romans 1.17. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, the righteousness which is attained by keeping the law, which no man can do. Mm -hmm. Keeping the law. What is that? Do, do and live. Mm -hmm. He describes the righteousness which is of the law, 
that the man which doeth those things shall live in them. Mm -hmm. So you see, under the old covenant, the only way you could live or be justified before God was by never failing in any of God's laws under that old covenant. Yes. You had to do all those things. Now, do what? It went from 10 commandments to 613 commandments, the Jews say God has in the Old Testament. But where Jesus is the author, it's a simple two commands. And what are those two commandments? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to love one another. Two commands under the New Covenant. Only two. That's much easier than 613, because who could even keep track of all those things? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is it? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to love one another as He gave us commandment. Mm -hmm. He, Jesus, gave us commandment. Two commands. Believe on, him, believe on Him and love each other. He who loves has fulfilled the law. Mm -hmm. not, we're not talking about the Ten Commandments. All we're talking about... Mm -hmm the law of righteousness, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes us free from the law of sin and death. The old covenant was the law of sin and death. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. The new covenant, the law is this. The man that's in Christ shall surely live. The woman who's in Christ shall surely live. It's location. What's our location? Christ. We're seated in heavenly places where? In Christ. Our life is hidden with who? With Christ where? In God. All right. He said in Galatians The law is not of faith. The Old Covenant is not a system of faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved. The law was a system of works. The soul that doeth these things will live. Okay, so the law is not of faith, Paul said, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Galatians 3.12 Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, keep my judgments, which if a man do, if a man does, he shall live in them. Leviticus 18.5 So, all these laws under the Old Covenant, you had to do them if you wanted to live. Mm -hmm. Under the New Covenant, we believe on Jesus in order to live. It doesn't require any performance on our part to get saved, does it? Except to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What shall I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul said, and you will be saved. And the moment you're saved... You become a new creature in Christ, mm -hmm. and old things are passed away. You're now accepted by God because you believed. Mm -hmm. 
The new covenant operates by believing in God for our righteousness. The old covenant had to do with us trying to attain our own righteousness by works. By what works? The works of obeying all the Ten Commandments without fail. Mm -hmm. All right? This is a spiritual covenant. Mm -hmm. This new covenant is a spiritual yes, it is. covenant. Under this new spiritual covenant, man gets a new spirit, as we've already said, mm -hmm. and a new heart. Mm -hmm. A new heart. The spirit is the scribe of the new covenant. Jewish scribes were dependent on to copy the Torah and the writings of the Old Testament. And they had to, they had to copy them accurately and faithfully. If they had made one mistake, they had to tear up the parchment and start all over again. Or the animal skin, they had to destroy it or burn it. They had to start all over because they could not allow God's Word to be corrupted or changed. All right, that was the, the human scribe. But God put a new spirit inside of us, and he said, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 31, 31, the, old the new covenant being established. Mm -hmm. Under the old covenant, he put his law outside of them, not inside them, but it was an exterior law inscribed in stone. But in the New Covenant, it's an interior law inscribed in the fleshy tables of our heart, Paul said. And so Paul's referring back to the promise here in Jeremiah 31, 31, that God would write His Word in our hearts, that He would write His Word in our inward parts. Paul comments on this in New Covenant, in the new, this New Covenant, Paul comments on this new covenant and says that God has written it in fleshy tables of the heart. 2 Corinthians 2 3. So 2 Corinthians 2 3 is a commentary on Jeremiah 31, 31, contrasting the New Covenant with the Old Covenant. Paul comments on this. He cites from the prophecy, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Then he said, You are manifestly, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, You are manifestly declared to be the epistle or handwriting of Christ, the Messiah, ministered by us, written with the Spirit of the living God. Now how was it ministered by Paul? by the apostles, by their preaching it. They were the instrument through which the Spirit used as a vehicle to convey God's revelation and His Word to the listeners, and as they heard and believed, the Spirit wrote it in their hearts. You got that? The Spirit was writing it. Paul was simply making it known. But Faith doesn't come except by hearing. hearing. And so somebody, how will they hear without a preacher? So the preacher and the Holy Spirit work together. The preacher makes known the words of God. The Spirit writes those words and transfers them to the heart of the listener who believes those words. So, we have God's word, God's law, inside us now. Not according to the old law, a new law, the law of love, because the law of love takes care of all the other things. All right. Fleshly tables of the heart. 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3. 
Okay, now, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do this and then we'll be finished. We still have more to cover, which we'll probably cover next week. So far we've seen that Jesus is this new covenant mediator. He mediates it to the believer. He's the surety. Or guarantee of the new covenant. He writes, teaches us. He's the teacher of it. He's the scribe of it. All right. And he is the circumciser. Did I spell that right? Okay. It's a new spiritual circumcision. Right? Now, under the old covenant, only the males could be circumcised. But under the new covenant, because it's spiritual and it deals with the heart, yes. even the ladies are circumcised now. Hallelujah. Male and female are both circumcised, mm -hmm. which means a complete Cutting away of the old nature. That's what's cut away from us now. The old you. Amen. Christ took the sword of His Spirit and circumcised our hearts so He has given us a new heart. Amen? Yeah. Deuteronomy 30 and 6. I will circumcise their heart. Who will do it? Man? No. God will do it. <laughs> He's the one who causes us to walk in His laws. He's the one that takes away the old nature. He is the circumciser of our heart. Deuteronomy 30 and 6. And the Lord your God, which is Christ, will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all all your heart. Amen? Say it all. All. all and with all your soul. All your soul. So that you may live. The moment Christ circumcised you, you lived. Amen. You received eternal life. Amen. You became a new creature. Your old nature was passed away. Behold, all things became new Amen. because you've been circumcised in your heart. The old nature has been eradicated, cut away forever and removed. Now, life now comes not by keeping commandments to see if you can do it all the way to the end. No. It begins your life. It doesn't achieve life. It begins your life. It's an impartation. It's a gift. Whereas the other is an achievement. There's a difference between working for something and getting it as a gift, right? Yes. If it's a gift, then I don't have to do anything for it. Mm -hmm. So, the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ... The gift of eternal life comes in when Christ comes in because He is eternal life. Mm -hmm. He that has the Son has life. He that doesn't have the Son does not have life. And life comes immediately into the new covenant. So it's not do and live, but it's live and then go on and do whatever God puts in your heart to do. You're not straining to try to be saved. You're not trying to become acceptable with God. Mm -hmm. The only thing that makes you acceptable with God is believing on His Son. Yes, amen. amen. All right. So eternal life is not achieved, it's received. Say, not achieved. Not achieved. It's received. It's received. And when did you receive it? When you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you entered into the new covenant. Amen. By faith. It's a faith covenant. Paul says in Romans 1.29 He is a Jew who is one inwardly. 
not he is a Jew who has been circumcised in the flesh on the eighth day as a baby. Mm -hmm. He is a Jew who is one spiritually, mm -hmm. inwardly. Remember, the Old Covenant is based on exterior things, laws written in stone, works that you do with your flesh, your carnal mind trying to obey God's law, but the carnal mind is not subject to laws, God's law, Paul said, yeah. neither indeed can it be. Yeah. So it takes a new man with a new spirit, with a new mind, with a renovated mind, uh, the mind of Christ, in order to believe what God has done for us, to believe on the gift that God has given to us. He is a Jew who is one on the inside, a spiritual Jew. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit. Say it, in the spirit. spirit. And not in the letter. Now whenever you see the words, the letter... We're talking about the law based on carnal ordinances. <clears throat> wash your hands. They had to wash in the water the tangible H2O of the earth. The water. They had to wash in the water to be clean. No. We're not talking about carnal water or carnal hands. We're talking in the spirit for we are washed by the washing of water by mm -hmm. the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Okay, so he is a, a true Jew who is one inwardly, whose circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, not in the flesh. Mm -hmm. As the letter of the law required. Romans 1.29 in Christ, say it, in Christ, in Christ, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. When he says the circumcision that's not made with hands, he's referring to what Jewish boys had happened to them on the eighth day when they were taken to the temple. It was the hands of human beings that circumcised them. But we are not trusting in a man to circumcise us or a man to give us new life, a new spirit, a new heart, and all these things. But we're trusting in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Christ also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off, in cutting away, in discarding the body of the sins of the flesh. What did Christ take out of us the moment we believed on Him? All, of our, all the sins we committed with our flesh. Yes. All the sins we committed with our flesh. All right. So, it's, our sins are remitted, our old nature is remitted, all these things. Colossians 1, 21. Spiritual circumcision. Colossians 1, I mean, excuse me, 2, 11. Christians have no need to practice Old Covenant carnal codes, the chief of which was circumcision, the sign of the covenant. Which covenant? The New Covenant or the Old Covenant? covenant. Fleshly circumcision was a sign of the Mosaic Covenant. Spiritual heart circumcision is the new sign of the New Covenant, the Jesus Covenant. Amen? Amen. So simple. So Christians have no need to practice the carnal requirements under the Mosaic Law. Getting circumcised, observing Sabbath days, eating kosher foods. Right? Yes. Those are all carnal ordinances. What you eat. But Jesus said, it's not what you put in your mouth that contaminates you, yes. defiles you. But it's what comes out of your heart that contaminates and defiles you. Yes, sir. Eating pork can't contaminate you or defile you. Amen. 
spiritual. We're talking about on a spiritual level. Yes. Our acceptance with God is not dependent on carnal observances. Mm -hmm. It has to do with receiving Christ in your heart. Mm -hmm. All Israelite males entered into the Old Covenant by being circumcised physically on the eighth day of their lives. Mm -hmm. G based in Genesis 17, verse 9 through 14, and Leviticus 12, 1 through 3. So, being circumcised into the Mosaic Covenant, they were then obligated to keep the Old Covenant. Mm -hmm. Amen. All the laws, all the rituals contained in it, were required to keep for only by observing every detail of it could an Israelite hope to fulfill it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Thus, if a Christian thinks he can be righteous before God mm -hmm. by observing Old Covenant practices, he must go the whole nine yards. Circumcision, wearing of tassels on their garments, phylacteries, washings, etc. Otherwise, he has violated it in its entirety. You cannot keep the Old Covenant by only keeping parts of it. The Old Covenant was designed that you either kept it all or you had violated it all. Even if you kept 99% of it and failed in one point, you had broken the covenant. You had broken the covenant. All right? So, Paul says that no one will be justified before God even if he could do all these things. Galatians 5, 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Amen. And he wrote that because these, these uh, law teachers were coming into the Christian churches and requiring them to get circumcised, and that they wouldn't be saved unless they got circumcised. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul brings it out. We are circumcised by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith, say it, faith, faith. which worketh faith. by what? By love. Love. Mm -hmm. You can be phys physically circumcised and not love anybody. Sir. You got rid of part of your body, but you didn't get rid of any part of your heart. Mm -hmm. You didn't get rid of your sin yes. by being physically circumcised. The Lord will circumcise your heart to love the Lord. Say it, to love the Lord. Love the Lord. Deuteronomy 30 and 6. I already have it up here. Why did God circumcise our heart? Mm -hmm. To love the Lord. When you became a new creature, what happened? You started loving the Lord. Why do we love the Lord? Because He first loved us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we see that the true circumcision, which is of the heart. Now, James wrote, For whoever keeps the whole law, say it, the whole law, the whole law. and yet offends in one point, yes. he is guilty of breaking all of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So the, under the Ten Commandments, you kept nine of them successfully, but failed in one. It's as if you'd broken all ten. Yes. The whole, the whole covenant was broken. So though you did not covet your neighbor's wife, but you failed to keep the Sabbath day, you broke the whole covenant. Mm -hmm. Got to offer sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Well, under the Old Testament, we see a man who gathered wood on the Sabbath day, he didn't even have a sacrifice for that sin. It was a mortal sin, which required mortal punishment. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, he was taken out and stoned mm -hmm. for breaking one command. Moses couldn't even enter the promised land mm -hmm. because he had failed to obey God mm -hmm. in one thing. <laughs> Think of it. That's sad, isn't it? Jesus. Beat the rock. Okay. James said, For whoever keeps the whole law and yet offends in one point, he is guilty of breaking the whole thing. And that's found in James 2.10. So, you want to go into the Hebrew Roots movement 
and you want to stop eating pork and you want to start want to start observing Sabbath days well then if your children curse you you have to take them outside into the yard and stone them to death cool that's part of the Old Testament is it not yes isn't that one of the laws under the Old Covenant mm -hmm. yes, sir. so if you want if you're you've been really need to start rethinking whether you want to go back under the Old Covenant again because yeah. under the New Covenant there's no stoning aren't you glad for that Hallelujah. yes they kept, they drugged the woman to yeah. Jesus who was taken in the very act of adultery, they claimed. Mm -hmm. And they said, Master, the law says that such should be stoned. What sayest thou? Okay, now what had they done? The old covenant representatives brought the adulterous woman who according to their old covenant required to be put to death for her transgression but they brought her to the wrong place when they brought them to Jesus they were bringing her to the new covenant yes. mm -hmm. Amen. and the new covenant says forgiven mm, Jesus. no condemnation right mm -hmm. no condemnation mm -hmm. boy she can be glad mm -hmm. because you see the law brings us to Christ yes does it not? Mm -hmm. The Old Covenant brings people to Jesus. And guess what? They brought this woman to the right place. They brought her to Jesus because under Jesus there's hope, there's life, and there's salvation. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for the New Covenant. We ask you, God, just to continue to bless our lives under this New Covenant and help us to realize that we're not under the Old Covenant and therefore we're not under condemnation anymore, but we've come to Jesus, the mediator of the New Covenant, where we find forgiveness, we find a new heart, a new soul, a new spirit, with the Spirit of God Himself having moved in and taken up His residence within us. Oh, Father, just glorify Jesus, the new covenant in our life every day, the covenant of grace, the covenant of faith, the covenant of believing and trusting in You through Jesus. Amen.